he counted it so important that his third appearance would be to them. And there are a number of things that we see here in this passage. First of all, Jesus knew where they were. He knew that they had gone back to fishing. He knew exactly where they were. The Sea of Tiberias, they're out the lake, they're, they're fishing, man, toil all night, caught nothing. Jesus knew exactly where they were, and Jesus came to them exactly where they were. Jesus has a way of coming to us, and he comes to us within the context of our situation. He, he came to them in such a, a disguised manner, the resurrected Lord. He came to them in such a, a related and relative manner that they did not know it was Jesus. Jesus knows how to reach us. He knows how to come to us. He knows how to associate with the condition that we're in, the place where we're at, and he comes to us. Then note also, <laughs> Jesus called out to them. He did not only come to them, he knew where they were, he came to them, and he called out to them to get their attention. Do you have any fish? Did you catch anything? In spite of their not recognizing him, he called out to them. And Jesus is still calling out to people, calling out to estranged servants of his, calling out to disconnected Christians, calling out to discouraged believers. He's calling out, did you catch any fish? Do you have any fish? He's calling out. And they didn't recognize his voice because Jesus was so adapting himself, the resurrected Lord, to their situation that they didn't even catch his voice. So he was part of the, the happening, the event. But here's where things begin to change now. They were a hundred yards from shore. That's the first thing. They were 100 yards from the shore. Now, if you know 100 yards distance, 100 yards is not very, very far. They were 100 yards from the shore. Uh, you might catch the odd fish on an occasion when fishes may be very hungry and coming near the shoreline, but 150 fishes don't come a hundred yards from shore. Are you with me? Yep. They caught, they toil all night, caught nothing. He calls out to them, do you have any fish? They respond, no. They're dejected, they're disappointed. The worst attitude you could ever encounter is a fisherman who goes out all night, catches nothing, and comes back home. And he's coming back to anchor his boat to clean his net and has nothing to show for working all night. Okay, Jesus now doesn't just call out, he commands, he gives them a command. And <laughs> this command is an unusual command. Let your nets down on the right side of the boat. That they would have taught all night, caught nothing, a hundred yards away from shore, and that they were willing and did let their nets down on the right side of the boat. Why did they do it? I believe that here you have, at this point, the resurrected Lord and Savior and Master manifesting miraculous power in that his command controlled those disciples. They didn't second guess. They didn't stop to argue. They didn't stop to think. They, they just did it. So here is Christ intervening in their situation miraculously as the Lord, the resurrected Lord, cast your nets on the right side, and they did. And when they cast the nets on the right side, they pull in fish <laughs> that they couldn't control the nets in that there were so many fish. There were, it was an unusual catch, an unusual catch. And it was at that point that when they saw that development, that happening, that John said, it's the Lord, it's the Lord. You see, they associated the happening with the
the power of Christ, which alone could have done such a thing. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. A while ago, they didn't know who he was. They didn't know his voice. Now they know it's him because of the catch that they're experiencing and because Jesus Christ was stepping into their disconnected situation with authority and power and showing that he was with them. Peter immediately, Peter immediately, <laughs> not, not Peter, Peter immediately upon recognizing that it was the Lord by the miracle catch, he put on his coat, jumped into the water and headed for shore. Now, you see, if they're a hundred yards away from shore, why would he put on his coat? He didn't put on his coat to go swimming. He put on his coat because they were not far from the shore. Are you with me? <laughs> so at least if he jumped into the water, it would be about maybe waist high or less than that. But he jumped into the water and headed for Jesus because of what had happened. He, before I go fishing, <laughs> toil all night, caught nothing, but now, note what made Peter to so respond. Peter responded the way he did because he was made to realize that Jesus was still for him. That Jesus had not deserted him. That in spite of his mistake, in spite of his claiming he didn't know the Lord, in spite of his miserable failing, here was Jesus coming back to them where they were in the midst of their predicament, in the midst of their need, in the midst of their feeling so uh, overcome by their failings, here was Jesus showing that he was for them. Peter jumped in the water and headed to shore because it was the Lord. I believe that those times when life hurts us and life gives reason for any form of disconnection in our lives, for any form of feeling we have failed the Lord, and possibly he doesn't love us as much as he used to, or maybe our association is not as close as it once was. Any situation in life that would prompt us to think that way and would bring about discouragement and uh, make us feel so dejected, Christ is there, still helping us, still working for us, still showing his power. He takes the initiative to help us to realize that he is with us even in our stupidity, even in our mistakes, even in our failings. He's there. He's there. I love you. I, I've not turned my back on you. I, I've not uh, given you up. I still love you. Jesus came to them. They come to shore and Jesus <laughs> knew they were out all night. He knew that they caught nothing. But yet Jesus had fish. <laughs> I want you to get the point. They went looking for fish. And they went back to fishing to get fish. But here is Jesus who had fish, man, roasting on the fire. <laughs> and bread. <laughs> the thing they went looking for, Jesus had. Jesus had, and, and, and he could give it to them. He could call them and said, come, breakfast time. Come, come and eat. Come, come. Come and refresh yourself. I know you're hungry. I know you're tired. Come. And this is the mistake that disconnected people are making. What they go in search of and what they think in their own strength they can uh, achieve and have and accumulate the very thing that they've gone in search of the thing that they want to have and to get Jesus has it and if they would only trust him he will make it available come come and die come and eat come come and have breakfast you know here is the human Jesus who although he is risen from the dead although he is he has shown that he is God in human form. Here is Jesus in such a human, in such a down-to-earth way, relating to people who have disconnected. 
come come and eat breakfast. You all went fishing. <laughs> you caught nothing. Come. I provided fish and bread for you. Come. Come. Oh, brothers and sisters, if we would only realize that Jesus became flesh. He understands us. He, he knows us. Uh, he, he touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He, he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows what we're after. He knows why the challenge is. He knows why, they, why they, the conflicts in our hearts. He knows why the struggles. He knows what we're going through. And he's saying, if you would only trust me, if you would only follow me, if you would only uh, depend upon me, if you would stop leaning on your own uh, ability and strength and trust me, I will cause you to be successful. Jesus provided them with bread and fish. But there's something else. And again, you see the, the loving tenderness of Jesus. He waited until they had eaten. He didn't lay a heavy on them. He waited until they had eaten. And when they were finished, he said to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? Now, there is some debate as to what the these there meant or means. Do you love me more than these? Some have said he was referring to the disciples because Jesus had said, Though all men forsake you, I will not. So some have said that he was referring to the disciples. Do you love me more than these disciples?